started Word Life back in 2008, and it was a response really to kind of the lack of different live literature events that were happening in Sheffield. But I came to the city as a writer, and I was looking for kind of opportunities to perform or collaborate, you know, an opportunity just to meet other kind of like-minded writers. And I couldn't really find, you know, that there wasn't much infrastructure in Sheffield back then. There was one regular poetry night that was above a function room in a pub. So I started Word Life off the back of that, really, like starting a night that I wanted to go to. So we started off in, a, I was still a student at Sheffield University at the time, so we ran in a function room as part of Sheffield University, and everything was built from them, you know, we ran it initially as a group of friends, and as we graduated, graduated from university, we kind of professionalised it, uh, we incorporated it as a company, and it's gone from there really, so now we've run events all across Yorkshire, uh, we run regular events in uh, Barnsley, Sheffield and Wakefield. And it's all basically about showcasing really exciting new writing to new audiences. And I think the thing that's always really exciting with poetry is that quite often people don't expect it to be good. And I think it's really exciting when you do a performance where you're on a gig to non-poetry audiences and they watch a performance and they come away with it thinking, actually that was, that was really enjoyable. Riot is a place of falling heads. Riot is the language of the unheard. Riot is available through many electronics retailers nationwide. Riot is quite hard to get the hang of. Riot is touring Europe in support of the Inishmore album. Riot is a largely acoustic sound, so it is not too loud for smaller venues. All these services, jobs, all this ongoing care that you cut without warning, that we said beware, you commissioners panicked and let the axe fall, let the neediest one, left the neediest ones with no comfort at all. And you thought we were silly in making a fuss when we said you must listen to people like us, the ones on the ground who go out every day giving help and support. We can see there's a way. We're saving you money. There's no need for tension. The work that we do saves, saves a pile of true prevention. We have each, each political party. We have a the Scottish National Party. They'd be the washing machine. The washing machine is fucking off to the utility room. <laughs> oh yeah, if you didn't even know you had a utility room, that's how much you give a shite. It's not yet autumn, still we choke on fumes. We breathe the bitter air, taste carbonic fog. Our throats numb to loss, our stomachs altered hard. We shall not feel a thing when center settles in. Pollution purifies the mind. We've been cleansed with thoughts of freedom and so are free to dream anew each stitch of bloody tapestry. We give our hearts and pierce our hands, we pray for Yorkshire's industry. Modern symbolics. Gunners blow their trumpets and bullets come out. For we are fast in combat now and there is little but flair and money about. Cities and towns simply shop fronts in our high street minds, our high street bounds. The news may be true, but it's not the truth. When will we have it then? How will you take the news? The stories that underpin our daily fray of work and play, the milestones marking the passing of days, and the hope and fear we lean against. That experience is what I always try and capture kind of programming events. I always think that if it's someone's first experience of coming to a live literature show, would they think it was accessible, would they think it was entertaining, would they think it was engaging? And that's always how I've tried to kind of structure the events that, that we've run. I mean, now we, we run a lot of other projects, so we do artistic development projects for local writers. We do digital uh, engagement projects where um, for example, we do customised Google Maps of different cities and we embed YouTube videos of different poets performing their own work. And, and again, it's a really great way of reaching out to new people, reaching out to new audiences. Give a very warm welcome to Mr. Kev Titson. Give it up for Kev! It's my birthday, it's April the 8th. Um, you might be thinking of his shit, but... But everybody's cottoned on. April the 8th, 2013 is the day we lost Mrs. Thatcher. We'll do that again, we'll have a cheer. Yeah. April 8, 2013 is the day we lost Mrs. Thatcher. Yeah. I got texts and emails and that saying, Kev, how hard did you fucking wish when you blew my cancer? I've been all, attending open my nights now about a year. The first one was here actually at Shakespeare. And um, I, you know, 
I've never, I've never done anything like that before, but that first experience was really good. It went down well and I've carried on from there. Do you know what she wanted? Great, you know, what Fred Westman when he takes yeah. door looking after your garden, you know. Anyway, I wrote this, it's called The Week After Thatcher, Sick and Fans, which is a marvellous acronym, twats. <laughs> As a nation, we just rewrote history. Having said which, that's not you. We often wear our glasses with lenses red, white and blue, so we turn conflict into crusade. We show pride when it should be shit. Definitely get, uh, definitely be influenced by open mic nights because um, I, when I went to school in the 70s, if you sort of revealed that you like poetry or words or things like that, you'd probably get a beating or your head flushed out of the toilet, you know. And I came to these sort of events and you sort of feed off each other and you realise that people's got some great things to say and there's great ways of saying it using words. Oh, there's a brilliant camaraderie between uh, between poets, I, I find anyway. I think it's great and a lot of people sort of come up to you afterwards and give you words of encouragement and I, vice versa. I'll say to people, I really like that. You know, you, you do hear some really, really profound things. It was not just Atlas who shrugged. <clears throat> what once was seen... <clears throat> excuse me. What once was seen... as a serious nonsense has now found its position of power and prominence. A malevolent ghost is the eminence Greece who oversees what is now a flourishing business. That's why we're raising the bar, kid. Some feel aggrieved there's a malaise in the market. Would you consider an all-day bender? They fear the weird in the fulfillment center. Shopping offers a transcendent state of grace and in the valleys there's a tit on the landscape. The workplace a giant silicon implant and it's feeding neoliberal descendants. That's why he says they're washing, dropping drones on the post, man. The high street's closed and it's haunted by ghosts, man. And my line's like a Iron Rant hand, man. That's what they're doing, dropping drones on the post, man. We need an artist who is under their radar. An incognito neo dada or bet noir. They're working endless cells reduced down to zero. They're holding out for an absurdist hero. A warehouse as long as 12 football pitches, and it holds an abundance of riches. I think, um, Words Loud, like I said, it was really supportive, it was great. Um, and then after that finished, there was a bit of a lull for, for a time. Um, but there was other nights, there was one at the Roebuck in Sheffield called Words and Things, which was a completely different crowd, a completely different, uh, set of performers and then there was uh, one called Vox that was at the Riverside, that was a great night. Um, that's where I met Helen Moore who ran Spyrites uh, before I did. Um, uh, and then I got like through sort of meeting Helen, I got a gig in Edinburgh doing it and then started sort of looking further afield. And then another night at the Riverside, I met Gab Roberts who runs Romp in Rotherham. And you start just sort of, I don't know, making connections with people um, seeing a lot of good poets, really, you know, and the good nights a lot of the time, so. I didn't close my eyes the first time, not like some of them. I just aimed for the heart. I've never fired the blank. I've known the recoil feels different. I reckon they don't do it, but say they do, to ease the conscience stricken. Now, I hunt men. When I see one, I aim, hold my breath, not for too long, or the rifle shakes. Caress the trigger and the head explodes. You see, I'm compassionate. Not like some of them. They aim low so it's long and lingering. But I like it quick, clean, nice. <laughs> first things first, I married Faust. We met a student. Jacked up, split up, made up, act up, got a mortgage on a house, flourished academically. BA, MA, PhD, no kids. Two towel bathrobes, hers, his. We worked, we saved, we moved again. Fast cars, a boat with sails, a second home in Wales. The latest toys, computers, mobile phones. Prospered, moved again. Hi, I'm Liz and I come from Stone, which is halfway between Stafford and Stoke. And I'm John and I come from the same place. We 
which is amazing considering we live with each other. We've been coming now for probably about three years is it? Yes. since it first started and we really enjoy the atmosphere here. We enjoy um, the mix of people and the mix of poems. You're always going to find something you enjoy. Often there are two guest poets and with the open mic often covering 12, 15 other people there's always got to be something which will make you think. And that's the beauty of it really. She's dressed like a sadist because she's dying of boredom in the real world. In her black leather armor, she goes stark in the streets because she wants them. She needs them. Science fiction, flesh of leather pain steel. Bodies made abstract with leather pain flesh. Touch my face with your leather glove. Tie the knots. Make it hard. Let me prove my love. I cling like cellophane to your skin for comfort and oblivion. Thighs and thongs, handcuffs and chains. In a darkened room, we found a love that was strange. Soft, dreamy eyes longing to touch. You hit me so hard, but I wanted it so much. Somewhere out there, a gold disc on Voyager 1 is taking the sound of rock and roll to another audience, with Chuck Berry cast as Buzz Lightyear, sending a message in 4-4 time to interstellar space, even though some scientists doubt if there is evidence for the existence of other life forms. The pieces of the puzzle line drains, soaked up. By that sluice, that struggle to hide in vain, it's showing up. The same old curdlers, curdled, not quite enough to hide. About those plans of plenty, for everyone in Britain living rough, they lied. Turn out your home, now a foreign squat. You're fine, you're that bit of Britain that became forgot when they turned blind. As you drop through the lake and toys fingers, just like a sieve. Old camera's plan was always tape but never give. I've been having lots of fun this week on an awesome Facebook group called Christians Against Dinosaurs. It's been an absolute hoot. I know that I should leave them. I should really close the door, walk away from all the madness, yet I still return for more. They just keep on making outrageous claims that make me split my sides, so I can't help making comments with contempt it's hard to hide. I just love their firmly held assumption, their arrogant opinion, that if you're not a Christian, you're the devil's minion. The dinosaurs, it seems, are just a glamorous honeyed lie, a conspiracy between Big Paleo and the devil, you know why. The dinosaurs, it seems, are just a glamorous honeyed lie, a conspiracy, a conspiracy between Big Paleo and the devil, you know why. It's all just to make money and to lure us from the truth, because dinos weren't in the Bible, so we must protect our youth from the lifestyles of corruption to which they would inevitably turn if they believed in dinosaurs and learn all they could learn about the history of the earth, of geological progression, of how species evolve and rise and fall, of scientific introspection. We have to save them from these insights, or these lies as they maintain, although their counter reputations don't convince, which is a shame. They hinge on a few fraudsters who've already been discovered, or the way that science develops as new facts and theories are uncovered. They don't seem to understand that that's how knowledge grows, and a scientist doesn't mind when new finds challenge what we know. <sighs> because they're on a mission to save us all from hell. At first I thought they're joking, but I guess I've got to wish them well. <laughs> Thank you.
Do you think it's good that there's a wide range of events around the local area? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's really nice that there's like really low key events where you don't have to stand up on stage and like have um, all the lights in your face and um, and microphones. I'm really not that great with microphones yet. Like um, microphones are not really my friend, and um, it can be a bit disconcerting to not know how you sound to the audience and so yeah it's good to um, be able to overcome just performing to people without having to overcome learning how to use a microphone and having lights shining in your face at the same time that's helpful yeah <laughs> one last thing do you think uh, attending these events has helped develop your own writing um, yeah, I think so. I think it has. It's it's really great to hear what other people are doing, and it's really nice to put my own work in the context of other people's work, and to um, to even hear the kind of things that like maybe maybe I could or should be writing about like you know I'm feeling like perhaps I ought to be writing something political I haven't actually done it yet but you know like I'm feeling like I you know that's a thing <laughs> I'm definitely thinking along those lines Well, I've been getting to the point where I can see if the solution is a problem or the problem's a solution anymore I'm going down I'm gonna drown Well, the question has no answer or the answer has no question Maybe nothing I'm going down We all go down, we all go down, we all go down Down the crow road Down the crow road Down the crow road Down the crow road I've been sitting here in this luckless delight thinking, pour me a glass of that hill you've been singing about, and I dust the old pot and I'll drink it, then maybe tell you what I've been wishing, for all the gods have been waiting, even the Christian one, and it wouldn't be the first time they said, what the hell is he thinking, and it's not that I don't care, or no I'm not your best friend, it's not that I don't love you, just that someone said something and I was full enough to, foolish enough to listen. Uh, probably in this event, probably about two or three years or something. I used to go to one years ago in Mexico, but it, never, it was more of a music thing rather than a poetry. You know. We've been just over a year now. Um, we've quite a success. I think it was a, a year. A year last month we was uh, since we started running. Yeah. I like what they were doing over at Spyrise in Chesterfield, and I, I felt that Rotherham needed something without the less intensity. Big Rump's a brilliant event and it's done so much for the town and for the poets and the, the, the local artistic community. But I felt that not everyone's comfortable with getting up on a stage in front of a microphone. And I thought people might feel a bit more relaxed sitting around at a table and while they've got a beer and just being able to relax and just read from where they sat and kind of a little bit what they do at Spyrise where they stand up at where they sat more or less but just kind of do it from where they sat and a bit more just a nice chill evening I thought it might be. Easier for people. Do you feel that you've achieved a nice, comfortable environment from poet to farm? 
I think so. Everyone have had a lot of good feedback. Um, everyone seems to people that come regular always, always, always respond positively and said they, they like the environment and the warmth of it. So I think we've achieved what we set out to do. Open carefully. Contains a whole heart, but with past breakages could be fragile and resemble crazy paving. Probability of nuts or showing signs of immaturity on occasion were harmless, not quite raving. <coughs> a good portion of sincerity coupled with a flair for caring ensures love may be given in abundance. Can and possibly will shed tears freely at some point, whether tears of happiness or tears of sadness. Though not a perfection of confection, and what is perfection? Satisfaction may be achieved with patience. If experiencing any doubt or unwillingness to commit your person to hugging, kissing, etc., in your best self-interest, steer clear. Well, I first started coming to romp in 2011, July, when Gav started it. I'm 62 now. I've never had any kids, but I've got more big, tall young men and women call me mother. I don't mind as long as they're not over 40. And uh, I lost somebody in 2012, my own mother. 2013, somebody I'd cared for for 20 years. And getting together and doing this is absolutely fabulous. Because I love writing, I've always loved writing. Um, we get musicians come with guitars, and I think there's one got a ukulele. And it's a really great pub since Tony and Christine got it. Which <laughs> one help you develop your writing? It has made, um, before I used to write, what I just call poems, but hearing everybody's different ways and now I think I write poetry. Well, you've got to hear some, yeah, but I think it's developed it. It's made me think more about it. And I've got a friend that even gets me counting syllables and editing my own stuff and I edit it, I write it and I edit it two or three times, which I never used to do. So anyway, proof of pudding will be in the eating. I've got three to read and write humorous stuff. He's heard me Yorkshire bingo. The origins are wrong. Basically, uh, I come into Bridging and I said, "Can we use Boozer for a, you know, like for an open mic poetry night?" This is about three years ago, so it'd be 2012. I said, "You know, like they they said you graciously said yes." Um, we had about 15 people first time. We had you know like 20 people next time, and then all of a sudden a lot of young ones come down, and we ended up having 35, 40 down. You know, since then, you know, because we work on a basis, we've never ever gone for a grant. We've never gone to, for funding from the Arts Council. Um, we've worked upon, you know, like basic equality. Right? There is the, the romp is made up of entirely what other people make it. Everybody in the room makes romp what it is, whether it's 12 people or whether it's 50. You know, like it's just the entire sum of the people there. It works on full equality. So we have a spare flat cap. You know, because I'm never left without one, you know, and so I always bring a spare spare hat. So and then, um, you know, names in a hat. The last person on picks the next person out. It's very very simple. Very very simple. Written rough across pink post-it note, a name and I O U. Cast into risky blackjack game, you're selling a part of you. Perfect handwriting with inky pen, the currency of fear and desperation. Playing against Satan, you better sell your soul for another bet. Another round of cards. I dreamed I was in paradise, bluebirds sang the sun did shine. And it was only grandma's stockings, vests and knickers that could be found online. I dreamed I was in paradise, my new car was so light it went just like a rocket. There was no problem parking, as it could be kept folded in my pocket. If, you know, for a town like Rotherham, right, well, let's face it, Nobody knew where we were till the races come to town, right? For a town like Rotherham to have two regular poetry nights, we've got big romp here at the Bridge Inn. You know, we've had to move upstairs tonight because of you know like various things. And then we've got and we've got romp two up at New York Tavern for a night like Rotherham, for a for a town like Rotherham, should I say, to have a, to have two poetry nights is something quite special. And we have people coming from Doncaster, Barnsley, Sheffield on a regular basis. And it's a testament to the people who, who write and actually create in Rotherham.